3 to 6 centimeters n3 is more than 6 centimeters so n1 no extra capsular meaning outside the lymph node there is no spread single modality of treatment what is that single modality of treatment you can either do a neck dissection alone or radiotherapy alone so either you do a neck dissection or you do radiation so either surgery or radiation that is for n1 now, if there is an advanced case where there is an extra capsular spread and the lesion is N2 and N3, then you are going to do a combined modality of therapy where you are going to club it with surgery and radiation or chemo and radiation. So, you will do a combined modal modality of therapy if it is a N2 or a N3 disease or there is an extra capsular spread. That is the first basic management. Now, what is the surgical management of the neck? Radical neck dissection or modified radical neck dissection or selective neck dissection will definitely be dependent upon the neck nodes, the extra capsular spread, the uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, the uh, ipsilateral or contralateral lymph nodes, the size of the lymph nodes will all determine the uh, radical neck dissection or modified radical neck dissection. Now, selective neck dissection has been suggested for those patients who are in N2A and N2B. N2A and N2B is ipsilateral side only where the lymph node is between 3 to 6 centimeters in size. In N2A, it is single node and it is ipsilateral node which is 3 to 6 centimeters. N2B is multiple nodes but they are ipsilateral. So, whenever there is a lymph node that is 3 to 6 centimeter ipsilateral side, then you are going to do a selective neck dissection. So, selective neck dissection for N2A and N2B. Most studies favor neck dissections upfront followed by either RT or chemo radiation as indicated. So, some studies tell that you can do neck dissection and follow it up with RT or chemo RT as indicated. So, that is for N2B and N2A and N2B. Now, let us see what is the role of radiation therapy to the neck and the putative primary site or the possible primary site. So, whenever we are talking about radiation, external beam radiotherapy can be given. Now, external beam radiotherapy can be given whenever there is a unilateral disease. So, whenever there is an ipsilateral primary site, we think it is there, then you will go for unilateral radiation. But if you have a bilateral neck disease, then you will go for total mucosal radiation. Now, total mucosal radiation comes with its own adverse events, the mucosal toxicity, the parotid, the submandibular, sublingual salivary glands in getting involved, resulting in xerostomia, inability to swallow, all of this comes with the possible adverse event. Now, bilateral external beam radiotherapy has showed a local control rate and a disease-free survival rate, but at what expense? At an expense of pain at an expense of xerostomia, long-term dysphagia requiring tube feeding. So, of course, with bilateral external beam radiotherapy, you are having a good five-year control period, but the patient will suffer from the radiation hazards that is there like xerostomia or pain and dysphagia. But to overcome this, we have newer technologies in radiation called as intensity modulated radiotherapy. So, where we are trying to give a targeted dose of radiation to the possible sites where we think cancer could be and prevent the involvement of normal tissues like the submandibular gland, the sublingual gland and thus prevent the toxicity. So, IMRT, intensity modulated radiotherapy can be given with bilateral neck radiation has uh, with bilateral neck radiation and it has reduced the acute and lay toxicity especially of the parotid glands as they can be spared. So, recommended treatments would be for patients with T0, N1, M0. So, where we do not know the primary site and egg, uh, there is an N1 uh, node on histopathology or radiological studies. Single modality of treatment, either neck dissection alone or radiotherapy alone. If the patient is treated surgically, upper aerodigestive mucosa should be having uh, surveillance postoperatively on a regular basis. But if there is patient with possible primary tumor where which is of a particular type which is T1, N0, M0 with no extra capsular spread, the patient should be treated with postoperative radiotherapy as well to the primary site. If the patient is having N2 or N3, what should we do? They should be treated with chemo RT 
to the primary site possible primary site followed by pet ct surveillance or a combined modality treatment where you do a neck dissection followed by rt or chemo rt so n2 or n3 diseases are not single modality therapy it is a dual modality therapy where you will do a chemo rt or rt club to with surgery so that is what you do for n2 or n3 but for n1 it is single modality of therapy either neck dissection or with radiotherapy so the treatment outcomes uh, for patients who are having a carcinoma with unknown primary there is an improved overall success rate and disease free survival rate with a combined modality therapy because today we have got newer med newer therapies alternative therapies for treatment and hence we are having a good success rate survival depends upon the end stage at presentation with worsening outcome that you see as the patient has increased on the stage so if the patient presents to you with an early end they'll have a good prognosis but a late end will have a poor prognosis five year survival rate is between 70% to 100% for n1 stage cancers but it reduces to 30% to 60% for patients who are n3 cancers so for n1 it is 70 to 100% disease free survival and a five year survival but it reduced down drastically when they present to you late with n2 or an n3 disease the overall survival rate for patients with head and neck squamous cell carcinoma with an unknown primary would be around 52 to 75% now patterns of failure if external beam radiotherapy is used disease recurrence usually in the neck in the form of distinct metastasis can occur FTG PET scan is definitely a key modality to identify recurrence in patients whom you think there is a possible recurrence. Distant metastasis occurs a year after completion of the therapy and most common distant metastatic site is usually the lung. Emergence of a primary tumor occurs within the first 24 months. And usually presents in oral cavity, oropharynx, or nasopharynx. So even if there is a neck node within 24 months, you will often see somewhere the primary tumor growing, and you can pick it up. And the possible sites are usually the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and the oral cavity. So what are the points that we need to know? That uh, the unknown primary of head and neck squamous cell carcinoma is becoming rare and lesser than five cases we are able to identify or miss today because we have a good uh, technological, uh, te technological armamentarium available to identify malignancies. Diagnostic work should include pan endoscopy bilateral tonsillectomy, biopsy from nasopharynx, tongue base and other possible suspicious site from the aerodigestive tract. Investigation CT MRI with FDG PET should be taken care of to identify the possible sites. Most of the possible primaries are in the oropharynx and treatment is based upon the stage of the disease. Molecular analysis of the metastatic cervical lymph nodes will help us identify nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal primaries. The survival outcome is good for early and poor for late stage disease. So with that, I complete my session on carcinoma with unknown primary. The foundation I have let you know, but to give you the last take home points, first of all, what is the definition? You should have a patient with a malignancy in the neck node which is positive or proven squamous cell carcinoma you do not know a primary within a five-year period then you say it's an occult primary or a metastatic lymphadenopathy now we've understood how we identify it or diagnose it the first and foremost is going to be by history the second is clinical examination fiber optic nasopharyngoscopy laryngoscopy narrow band imaging and then you have got biopsies taken from different sites the potential sites are tonsils nasopharynx base of tongue the pyriform fossa and sometimes the infrahyoid epiglottis as well I have told you what you have to do, why bilateral tonsillectomy, pan mucosal mucosectomy from the base of tongue, why should you take a wedge biopsy, why you should do the procedure in GA, we have discussed that. And then once we've identified this, 
how do we I treat the patients? The treatment is basically on the end stage and uh, earlier presentation, better the prognosis, very simple N1, which is going to give single modality, either surgery or radiation. N2, N3, it is going to be combined therapy, either surgery with RT or chemo with RT. That's going to be done. The primary putative site can be treated with external beam radiotherapy or it can be clubbed up with surgery and radiation therapy. And we have understood that the long longer survival rates are better for those patients who present to you early. Thank you.